Uh, accordingly, I invite the Honourable Member for Selkirk Interlake for his right of reply. The Honourable Member has five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate the opportunity to reply to the comments that have been made in the House over the last two hours of debate. I want to thank those members that have spoken out in favour of my bill uh, and the importance of it and uh, how it is about standing up for victims and the re-victimization that they face every time they have to attend an unnecessary parole board hearing. Now, Mr. Speaker, I have to take a great deal of exception with some of the statements that were made by members across the way that this is a government bill. That is an insult to my staff who have worked on this bill so diligently. It's an insult to the Library of Parliament researchers and drafters who helped write my bill uh, to help in the drafting process. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that those types of comments are not at all helpful to the overall decor of this place when it's trying to minimize us as private members and bringing forward business. As I said in my opening comments, Mr. Speaker, my catalyst for, for going forward with this bill goes back to 2009 when I first started thinking about what was happening with the Tory Stafford case, with the, the capture of Michael Rafferty and Terry Lynn McClintock, and the overall uh, result of having them uh, uh, sentenced to life imprisonment. And while that was taking place, we were listening to the Clifford Olson saga as he was dying in prison from cancer and all the stories about how he re-victimized uh, the families of his victims over and over again by going and making them appear at these unnecessary parole board hearings. No, Mr. Speaker, it's important that we respect one another in this place and by making those types of comments that minimizes our role in this, this chamber as being puppets for the government I think is deeply disturbing and at some point in time uh, I would re be, maybe be requesting an apology from the members who made those statements. You know, Mr. Speaker, some of the comments revolved around the constitutionality of Bill 478 and I can tell you that that, that is a concern that I had and wanted to make sure that this bill, if we're going to draft a bill, it wasn't going to be struck down by the courts under a charter challenge. And so it was uh, giving full power and discretion to the judges, to the judiciary, to make the decision on whether or not they want to increase parole and eligibility from 25 years up to a maximum of 40 years. They have the uh, power, uh, either through a jury process or on their own, to make a decision whether or not uh, parole and eligibility can be anywhere between 25 and 40 years. And it is important to note that these are the most depraved and sadistic murderers in Canadian society. These are the people that go to jail and are never again released. And I think that is something that we have to take special note of, is that these, this isn't about stiffer penalties and more punishment, because these murderers never uh, ever are given uh, parole and eligibility. Also, to make sure that this bill was constitutional, I want to fashion it after Bill C-478, which uh, passed in 2011, just before the last election. And that bill was proven to be constitutional and charter compliant. And so I fashioned our bill after that process. Now, as it was pointed out by some members here that maybe it's not perfect in, in its terms because it was a private member's bill, it was drafted uh, by the Library of Parliament and my staff and, and uh, working together. And so, yeah, we are willing to accept any amendments that improve the technical aspects and the legality of Bill 4, C-478. I've also taken note that some people said that victims' rights groups are not supporting this bill. Well, I can tell you that the victims of violence le led by Sharon Rosenfeld support this bill, that Yvonne Harvey and the Canadian parents of murdered children support this bill. Uh, the Association of Families of Murdered and Missing People support this bill. The Canadian Research Center for Victims of Crime support this bill. You know, Mr. Speaker, also I heard from the NDP that th uh, in the first hour debate that this bill violates international law. And they kept talking about the Rome Statute. Well, I can tell you that the International Criminal Court and the, sta and, and the Rome Statute applies only to genocides, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and the crime of aggression. This is a domestic bill domestic law and the power completely lies with the country and Parliament to make these decisions. And to point out the hypocrisy of the NDP, they supported Bill C-478 in the last Parliament. And so why wouldn't they support this bill, which is fashioned in the same format as Bill C-48 and even goes farther in addressing the most depraved, sadistic murderers who go out 
and abduct children, abduct individuals, sexually assault them, and then violently murder them. Those are the people we want to make sure that we address and ensure that their family, or the families of those victims are not having to be re-terrorized by these horrific individuals. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.